So welcome to another exciting episode of the Healing Chronic Summit and uh, Healing Chronic Illness Summit. <laughs> yeah, today I have another surprise guest and I'm really excited. Welcome, Dr. Fan. Hi, nice to be here. Nice to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Yeah, I, I heard from Susan that you wanted to participate and I was so excited to have you on the show. Yeah, because <clears throat> if we can get the word out more as far as um, how to heal from chronic illness um, yeah. and take, as Anthony said, Anthony Williams says, you know, to empower yourself. Um, you may not even need me, people like me, but that's, that's scary for a lot of people in the industry, but you always need doctors, but you can also, you know, progress on your own because a lot of the answers are not there. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to hear things like that from a doctor. And yeah, that might convince some people to take a look at it. Yeah, hope so, hope so, hope so. I've been trying, I, every day I see people, I talk about it all the time and you'll find out. I mean, some people are open to it and some people aren't. And you just have to kind of, um, kind of fill them out a little bit. And they're like, oh, he's crazy. You know? I'm like, is this a white coat or is it a straight jacket? I'm like, <laughs> a little Do bit of really both. have a license. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. Um, what did you want to talk about today? Uh, there's so many things we can talk about. I'm totally open. I saw you had a little presentation in uh, okay. collaboration. Yeah. We can do that. I threw one together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll, 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 uh, let's see if I can share my screen. And uh, if there are any pictures of naughty things, just, just disregard that. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, I, if you haven't figured it out, I'd like to be a little lighthearted about this. That's the best I can do because, you know, as a practitioner, um, we see a lot of serious things and people who will come to us with years of, of suffering, you want to call it, or just pain and spend a lot of money. And if you don't laugh about it, <laughs> you're going to cry about it. So it's better yes. to laugh and cry. And like with many practitioners uh, who got into um, alternative health or even just healthcare, they're looking for ways to help themselves their family, people they care about. Um, but uh, I'm gonna touch upon that and I'm gonna go all over the place. So, you know, it's, I'm gonna blame the heavy metals in my brain for going, being sporadic. But um, Yeah, I have a lot of them too. Right. So all right, <laughs> in the crowd. <laughs> but my topic was uh, becoming a practitioner uh, from the medical medium practitioner, uh, from the standpoint, regardless of whether you're a licensed, you know, whatever doctor or whatever, you don't have to be, uh, you can be a health coach. You can be a naturopath, you know, whatever it is. And, and Anthony will take you, you know, more, you know, whatever you are. And as long as you, um, he always says it's, it's the practitioner that makes a difference, not necessarily the modality or the belief system, because the belief system is kind of keep, keeps us uh, kind of narrow minded a little, little bit. And so when you have the, the compassion or the, the caring to really help the patient, you're going to go out on a limb to help them. You're gonna explore other things. And that's the most important part of becoming a practitioner, or even if you're just treating your own family, you don't have to be like, you know, licensed or, you know, have a certification. Many people think that they're not good enough because they don't have a certain credential behind their name. Yeah, absolutely. I totally understand. Yeah. So I'm gonna start here and uh, just stop me whenever. Uh, so this is about me. I went to, you know, some, School of medicine, did internal medicine residency. I used to be a hospitalist, meaning that I only saw patients in the hospital. And now I practice outpatient medicine. And I used to work like seven days a week just because I'm like, I'm new, I'm going to learn all this stuff. And it was really fun because when you ever have a question, you have you, you could consult a doctor. You could consult an infectious disease doctor or a cardiologist, you know, a kidney doctor, right? Because I don't know everything, right? So yeah, I get the answer. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Compared to yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, we, we know a lot of what I uh, learned, right, what I was taught, because you know, I remember asking my, my, um, you know, my attendings, my teachers, and they're like, oh, no, you don't have to worry about that, and, and, and it didn't make sense, I just didn't understand it, but you just kind of go along with it, because that's what you're taught, so this is where it comes in, is why do doctors think the way they do, okay, in, in standard education is we are taught from a young age to kind of like conform to the system. And that's nothing wrong with that, right? We have to learn to socialize and be part of a group. And some children do better than others. Some children are good at uh, math and arithmetic and writing. They're very 
academic wise, they're, they're visual learners. And some children are just like, ah, you know, just daydreaming, right? right. And, <laughs> or you're like Anthony, you know, thinking about serious talking to the head. You know, so. But um, some don't do so well. They don't, they don't thrive in the academic environment, right? And so the majority of doctors who have gone through the academic training do well in visual, you know, maybe audio type learning skills. And so those are the ones who make the A's, right? And so throughout, you know, you're taught to be a good student and do homework and do all this stuff. And these are the ones, the ones who can get through that do well. The ones who can go, let's say to college or whatever it is, to medical school, if you're not sick, you're gonna get through medical school. You're gonna get through college, right? It takes, um, let's say 12 years in, in America, it's 12 years of uh, basically primary education. And then it's four years of college. And then there's another four years of medical school if you get in because you have to apply and you have to have good letter you know, re recommendations and stuff like this. Um, and then there's another training after that. There, you, you choose your training, whether you go into internal medicine or you go into surgery or you, and then you can go even more specialized after that. Well, after, after like, I don't know, how many, is that, how many years of training is that? Like 12, I mean, a school is 12 plus four, eight, 20, 20 something years, 23 years of training. I was like, man, I'm done. I don't want to do any more. I'm tired. You know, I could go further. And a lot of people want to go further because there's an economic incentive to be a specialist. You, you, you get more, you pay more for it to be a specialist. Um, but I was just tired of it. I just, I thought I wanted to do rheumatology. And at first I thought of pediatrics, but I can't see kids die. It's just so hard to see kids die. So I was like, I, I can't do that. You know, plus they don't understand my stupid jokes anyway. So I decided not to do that. But, um, uh, but the kids who get through the young people who get through medical school, they're usually healthy. They don't have, as much chronic Epstein bar or whatever it is. Because if you have that, you're not getting through school. You're gonna be so tired, you can't, you know, your mind's not you can't get through school. So the majority of people come out of medical school or medical school or college, whatever, um, who can make to the higher levels, they don't understand chronic illness because they've never been sick themselves. Right? Yeah. So here you are, you're a young resident and you're staying up to three o'clock in the morning seeing patients and you know, the next day you're rounding all day with your attending physician. And they're grilling you because they're trying to teach you. Like they ask you these questions, like what's the, you know, what the cranial nerve is this? And you're like, I don't know. I don't can't even think of my own phone number. What are you telling me? Ask me these questions for. I just need to get through the patients so we can go home, go to sleep, and take a shower, you know. But uh, it, it's stressful on the on the adrenals, right? When you go through medical school and residency and staying up all night and seeing sick people. So again, if you're sick, you're not going to get there. Uh, and so you don't have the the um, experience of knowing what the patient goes through until your own self gets sick or a family member gets sick right so again so you come out of medical school you're like i know everything they taught me all this stuff i've got it you know i've got a degree you know whatever it is md do or you know you know whatever um <clears throat> and so somebody and so you get out into the real world practice you go you finish training and they never taught you about chronic illness they never talk about you know, Epstein-Barr, I have maybe two hours of lecture on nutrition, right? And one hour is scurvy, and the next hour is rickets. And then there you go, there you go. To become an expert, you have to go to uh, Barnes & Noble, and you read whatever is on the health and diet bestseller list, right? And you read that book, and it goes, I'm a doctor. So think about it. If, you are a, uh, if you're a patient coming to see a doctor, and the nutritionist says something, and the fat doctor says something, who do you believe more? Yeah, right? I had that too. Yeah, the doctor, and so well, the doctor went to medical school. He must know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doctors that, need right? to eat healthy. But if yeah. you ask them, then yeah, what they tell you yeah. is healthy. It's a totally different perspective than what I used to think it's healthy. Yeah. So if if the doctor just read a keto book, he'd be like, "Oh, you should do this. You know, you should do that." Or you know, I just read his "Eat Right for My." my crap type, I mean, my blood type, and you should do this. And it's just whatever flavor of the month, right? Whatever. And so, um, and did you this ever is how go through a chronic illness or did you have, have I? Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a family member who, who, this is how I found medical medium, right? Oh. Because not only was I looking, I've always been kind of thinking outside the box a little bit, but it took my family member going through something before and I, and I was running, and maybe I can go into this, is that, you know, I talk about how we think now that doctors are, you know, the white coat, the white robe, it's kind of religion, right? Like the doc, the, you know, 
the priest or whatever says this, so the doctor is in a similar role, right? And and in religion, we have to like know God through the guy in the white coat or white robe. I'm sorry. And then for healing, it's like no knowing healing through the guy in a white coat, right? But the Anthony is saying, no, you can you can you can do both, but you can also empower yourself to heal, right? From the information we get. And I, I found I found alternative medicine because I was trying to help people, you know, chronic people come see me. They like, I don't know, I have this like, sticker on my back that says, you know, tough cases, crazy people come see Dr. Fan, right? And I just <laughs> helping people through thyroid. Yeah. And I was like Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey is a television personality in, in America. She's I know. retired. Like, you get thyroid, you get thyroid. I was getting thyroid medicine. I was getting mm. hormones to everybody. And I figured out that that's not the way to go because even if your thyroid is sick, I mean, low the functioning, more thyroid medicine is not going to fix it. it yeah, I had it, it too. I, I also yeah. got the thyroid medication and I thought that does not make sense to eat thyroid medication for the rest of my life. Yeah, it's kind of like if, I, if you're trying to teach a child to ride a bike and you put training wheels on it and you get bigger and bigger training wheels. It's like, you know, you never really get to the root of the problem. You're, you're helping it, but you're not getting, why, you know, why is the thyroid off? And I was just looking for answers, looking for answers. And uh, I was doing whatever the patients wanted to try because they read this book. And I said, let's try that. You know, I wanted to learn, right? Um, and then the, the, another instance was, uh, I'm gonna talk about, actually my family member is, um, we had gone to different alternative practitioners, right? And you know, you, you, if you're if you're a parent of a child, right? The parent's like, here, here's money, please help my child. And you're spending all this money, and you're not seeing the results. And but this is the this is the newest, latest, safest, natural thing, right? Um, it's hard, you know. Some of the practitioners they have to make a living, right? They're going to charge you more money. They don't take insurance. So they're going to charge you more money. There's nothing wrong with charging money for your services, right? But if you don't have the right information then you're just going, 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 and going, you know, and some, some, you just going by the testimonial, some kid who got better or some other person got better. Somebody's posted on Instagram, this kid got better because he was doing whatever, but we don't know the whole story of it. Right. So, um, so at the same time I was doing, you know, alternative medicine kind of right. And my family member was still looking for answers. Um, I was also dealing with this patient here. This is another example of one of my patients. I'll call her Sandy. She was like 36 when we first started seeing me, and she had like chronic myeloid, myeloid leukemia. And I was bringing her to the hospital every, almost every month because she had all these symptoms. Now I know. I mean, I wish I had known medical medium stuff. Like, though, I could have helped her. I could have helped her a lot more. And I got the, I got the infectious disease doctor to see her, and the cardiologist, and neurologist, and I got all these specialists to see things like, this patient is just seeking medication. They're just looking for narcotics. And I'm like, Oh, she's got something real. She can, how do you fake a rash that's here, here? And it was shingles, basically, right? But she had obviously Epstein Barr, and she had uh, uh, shingles, and she had all the stuff. But I didn't know, and nobody could help her. And I just felt so bad. She ended up passing away when she was like 42, and was, her husband just found her in his sleep. And this is before I found Anthony. But after I found Anthony, I was like, oh my god, I wish, I wish I had this information. Help her. You know, yeah. and um, when I started doing Anthony's stuff, I just kind of started slow because, come on, you know, I'm a doctor. I listen to a guy with a voice in his head. Is that, is that crazy? <laughs> Absolutely. Right? And, and uh, I just thought to myself, like, you know, my wife is just like, she rolled her eyes. She's like, ah, here you go again. One of your crazy, you know, quests to find the answer, you know, and she just <laughs> kept it. Um, but um but it, I tried it my, little by little, my patients, and it's like, wow, that, that's not bad. That kind of worked. That kind of worked. And I built my confidence up, right? So if you're a practitioner, you build your confidence up little by little. If you have to, take your time. You have to, right? And you try things. You lean on other people. I was leaning on, I mean, I don't think the books were out. And well, we talked to Anthony before the book came out. But when the book came out, that's when I started really like reading about it and going, oh, my God, thyroid. I, I need to change how I practice, totally. So you already... So then, uh knew about medical medium teachings before the books even came out well i'd heard them on on hay house radio oh right and that's how i even you know I, and i got a consult with him uh for my family member uh but i mean back then there was nothing there was like the the radio show and that was it you know and then the book came out it was a little bit more right 
And so it, you know, if you're practicing now, you've got, I guess, six books now, right? Six books, all the podcasts, all the blogs, um, Muniz's groups and the other people and the other practitioners who are just like, you know, learning and learning and learning. So got a whole lot more and you've got like social proof on Instagram. And, and so there's a lot more in place now than there was, you know, years ago. So it's a great place to learn and, and kind of, you know, figure it out. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I started applying this uh, to our family member, we saw some results. And so it made me really like, wow, it's amazing. You know, and when the book came out, it actually just added more, uh, you know, more knowledge to my base. So. And you know, now I'm your not, family I'm, member is all better? No, 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 no. Uh, but on his way. He's, on, he's doing better, a lot better, yeah. Um, he, he told us it would take years, years and years. And if you stop it, uh, he will get worse. So you see, he said that if you don't do this, initially I was like, what? I do that. It's like crazy. He's already, he's already dairy free and gluten free. You tell me to take eggs out too. I'm like, come on. That's going to be hard. <laughs> he was a kid in the family. And, um, and I said, well, if he does this, everybody in the family has to do it because imagine you're a, a little, little kid and you're eating, like you're only given this food and everybody else is eating the things that you want to eat. And you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, I must be a bad boy. Cause mom and dad are not feeding me those food that my sister is eating or my, you know, my grandfather is eating, you know? So a whole family had to do it. And I was telling him, Anthony, I, I don't know. He goes, look, I know it's hard to believe, but if you don't do it, he's going to get worse. So really try. And, and we didn't, we didn't go all the way in the three months, three months, you know, we saw this change and we didn't see a thousand dollars in years of other treatment, but we didn't go like hundred percent because we just, it was hard. But even the stuff that we did do, we saw this change in him. So we were like, Oh my God, there's something there, you know, but, um, uh, yeah. So, so more, the more I kind of did it in my practice, the more I saw, I was like, as simple as look, people can't wake up in the middle of the night, right? They're like, oh, I can't wait. Well, eat a banana if you go to sleep. You know, I call it the BBB banana before bed. Right. And, <laughs> That's a um, good word. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, Dr. Finn, that worked. Right. That worked. That guy's like, Oh, it's easier than taking an Ambien or taking a medica medication. So small little things that we change, you know, and, um, and, and as a practitioner, as you, again, as you develop uh, the compassion and the confidence, um, your, your compassion is first, I think is what Anthony was saying, and then your confidence comes in and then you become more intuitive. You kind of, you know, you're not going to hear voice in your head, but you're going to like, oh, you know, I think this is what we need to do for a patient and you get better and better and better. And, and you feel that confidence, the patient, the client, whatever, will feel that too right because because i'm the right. worst when it comes to confidence but like hey i try it out i don't know yeah if, if you're talking to somebody and something like yeah you can try that yeah, maybe maybe you don't feel confident but if the doctor or the practitioner goes like i've done this for you know whatever 10 20 20 30 patients I have a patient just like you you know we i had this symptom myself please try this out right and you don't put you don't sell it hard you don't say you have to do this or else um but but and they'll, they'll feel it. They'll feel that energy, like whatever you want to call it, confidential energy. And they're like, okay, well, I'll try that out. You know, it helps. I mean, I have off days and good days. Every one of the practitioners who are serious about medical medium, we're all dealing with problems. Yeah, you know, even, you can, there you are can, so difficult cases that you have to think about, gosh, what am I going to do then? Yeah, but, but even if our own, our own medical issues, our own chronic illness issues, because all of us got epstein bar strep and uh, shingles. The question is how much and what balance we have. But <clears throat> we're all like the walking wounded, I call it, right? Because we have our own yeah. issues. We're not perfect every single day. But we're so much better than we were four or five years ago, right? And many people during this path, they're like, I've been doing this for two years now. I'm not completely doing backflips and, you know, and able to have sex with my wife 10 times a day. And it's like, well, it's not about that. It's not like when you were 20 years old. It's you see the difference between, but it's hard to see the difference if you don't compare um, some of the changes are very subtle, and if you're not paying attention, you won't. But you're just focused on, let's say, weight. You're only focused about weight. You forget that every other day you had a bowel movement. Now you're having a bowel movement every day. That your thinking is a little clearer. These are small things that you're not paying attention to get better. Yeah. Right. So, um, but uh, and I, I'm going to give you this, this is a picture. If you can see this here, this is me. Um, I had this. You see that on the left side? There's a little mark on my cheek. Yeah. Okay. I had that for, um, since my daughter was born, I think 11 years, basically. 
And then I talked to Manisa and she's like, okay, do this, do this, right? And it went away. It, there is a product that I use, it's called I Am Beautiful and oil. And uh, <laughs> for three and a half months I was putting on every night, okay? Nothing, okay? And the wife makes fun of me. She reads the body, she goes, honey, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to say I am beautiful in the mirror after you put it on. You're not doing <laughs> that. That's why it's not working. I'm like, ah, funny, funny, funny. So then after three and a half months, it started getting really red every time I put it on. And uh, I think it was like, yeah. And so it's like somebody, you get really red. So I'd go to the clinic and the patient's like, hey, Dr. Fan, did somebody punch you in the face? I'm like, no, I just put this, this oil on, right? So I stopped putting the oil because every time I put it on, it gets inflamed. So I only did it uh, on the weekend. So after six months, it went away. I cleaned my diet up, you know, and I, you know, and so you see on this picture, there's a little bit, you know, on the right side, you can see it, you can hardly see it. If it was on this side, I don't know if you can see it, but sometimes if I eat something wrong, or I'll get a little almost like a hive almost here, yeah. but you really see it very well. So, um, you know, you can kind of prove it to yourself that these things work. Right. Uh, just, just to give you a picture there. Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, some of the stories I have about the medical medium. But uh, I have this little slide talking about in the future, how will we view what medicine used to tell us, right? And uh, like, let's just look at look at the Chinese, right? This emperor died after drinking some mercury because it was elixir of life. And they thought, oh, look, it's shiny, it's flowing, it must be good for you, right? Killed, killed, but they're still, we're still, you know, saying people are still doing mercury, you know, drinking, right? And that's where we get it. Because I, I used to think Anthony would say on his podcast, everybody's got mercury, their ancestors drank mercury. I'm like, maybe in Europe, really in Asia, right? But clearly yeah. in Asia, uh, and even in, you know, the, Middle East, they were drinking mercury, and this is something that everybody has, right? I never heard of that before in Asia. Yeah, me, me either. I had to look into it. Um, <laughs> this is a funny story. Uh, back in the during the black, the the the, the Great Plague, right? The, the Black Plague, um, they used to think that the vapors of the air caused you know something. And that's why they have these big old masks. You see these masks that have these beaks on them. They used to think that that would protect them. These doctors didn't even protect them from the patients who had, you know, the, the Black Plague. And they thought it was something to do with the, the breathing in of vapors or something like this, right? So in order to block the, these bad gases, whatever it is, they would, they would basically fart in a jar, right? And they would carry it around and open it up kind of like <laughs> to, sort of, to block the bad stuff coming in. So this is what the, you know, moder this is what the cutting edge medicine was, right? And, you know, you know, talking about boar bile enemas and all these weird animal products that, you know, you can look this up. I'm not making it up, right? Um, and this is what people used to think back in the old days, right? Um, you know, using animal-based remedies like, you know, I have, I have new, I have whatever will help your eyes or something like this. I mean, luckily, I mean, for some odd reason, thyroid worked, but Anthony talks about that too, you know? Um, so this is, this is back in the Middle Ages, right? Jar of farts, okay? But here we go. 2014, scientisttime.com magazine. Scientists say smelling farts might prevent cancer. See? This recycle, and Anthony says, they keep on recycling old things back and forth. Oh, the Atkins is now, we're gonna, we're gonna call it the keto diet now. We're gonna, we're gonna tell you about eating more protein and more animals. Or, so they keep on recycling information. And we have like, um, and this is the article that I found online. Again, sticky compound may protect against cell damage, right? Study finds. You can find a study for anything, okay? So it's, it's you know, Anthony talks about how, what's the reliability of the study? What's the power of the study? How many test subjects? Who is standing to gain? Who's paying for the study, right? You have to take it with a grain of salt. I, I'm trying to use to fight fire with fire, so to speak, by finding other things that back up use of antioxidants and the mushrooms that he talks about, right? Just to show people, look, I can show you good things about, you know, natural remedies just as well, right? Absolutely. We have a guy in Germany, too, that does that. He's looking up all kinds of uh, studies for, yeah, raw foods and antioxidants and viruses. And he's also a raw vegan. Yeah, yeah. And you have to be careful because there's a lot of misinformation because, you know, in that crowd is apple cider vinegar and fasting, intermittent fasting, water fasting, da, da, da. And it sounds, it's, all, it's coming from the natural people. But there's, there's misinformation in that, right? So you have to really not only change your belief system, because, I mean, you know, 
Ayurvedic medicine, copper or, you know, copper vessels is good to drink from. It's like, really? I, I don't know about that. You know, if we talk about, let's say, Chinese medicine, acupuncture uh, originated thousands of years ago, right? Well, thousands of years ago, they didn't have um, radiation, right? They didn't have 80,000 man-made chemicals in the environment, right? They didn't have EMF. They didn't have, you know, all these different things, you know, that we now have. Now, you can still use Chinese medicine, but you have to think about there are other things on top of that, right? And Absolutely. some people can handle acupuncture. They're just so, their adrenals are so weak that when they put a needle on, their adrenaline goes up and it just makes them feel bad. So everybody's a little different, okay? Yeah, I tried uh, acupuncture too, but I never really felt a difference in my digestive issues. Yeah, uh, let's just say if, if acupuncture did work, I mean, if you could learn yourself and do it yourself, great, but you, you're kind of tied again to the acupuncturist. Unless you're sleeping with an acupuncturist, they're not going to do it for you every day unless you can do it yourself. So using the book information, at least you can do it yourself, right? Yeah. Um, or, you know, try at least. Um, again, this is another idea of like balancing the four humors in the body, right? And um, if you had bad humor, right, bad humor, you were thought to be sick. And so taking blood out was a way to balance the humors, right? I mean, obviously, we still do that now. It's phlebotomy. You know, people who have testosterone, their, their, their blood counts are too high, you take blood out. Or the hemochromatosis, they're too much iron, you take blood out. So we're still using these concepts in the old days. We know from anything that taking too much blood out will deplete your white blood cells and weaken your immune system, right? This is why George Washington, the, president of the, United, the first president of the United States, died because they, they bled, bled him to death because they thought that they were balancing his humors, you know? Um, there's this, there's just this, this theory of spontaneous generation, you know, how pe pe people thought that, you know, flies arose from dead flesh. And we know that's not true, but these are, this is the cutting edge science back then. So when we look, like, look, DDT, right? They think it was good for you. So they sprayed on the food, you know, um, this is an ad in a medical journal, right? More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette because it's healthy. It's like the menthol is good for your breathing. It's not right. Even the CDC back then was recommending, you know, smoke, smoking. There's no relation between smoking and cancer. No way. No way. Oh, yeah? Really? And so what more can you name, right? There's, there's so many other things. So we try to bridge the gap between um, conventional medicine and alternative, and in this case, our case, medical medium information, right? Um, when you're trying to incorporate with your own doctor, because you're like, hey, doc, I got this book. I've got all these books. Uh, and can you, can you talk to me about this? Most doctors won't know about it, unless your doctor is really forward moving. But the problem is, if your doctor's alternative, right? He's already looked into this stuff. He may be, he or she may be a functional doctor, right? And the problem with those functional doctors, again, you've been taught another way and there's a financial incentive for them to recommend um, bone broth or collagen powder or this special vitamin mix that if you buy it for me, I get a little incentive out of it. I get, you know, money from it basically. And you gotta support your doctor because he's he doesn't have he or she the alternative doesn't take insurance for sometimes. But they may be, you know, financially inclined. That's why Anthony doesn't really like uh, you know get sponsored by companies per se. He'll talk about good good products and if the products change, he'll like get out of here, right? But yeah. he doesn't get sponsored that because he doesn't want to be for me, I don't care. I mean like I'm whatever works, right? If I get a you know I get a result from it and it doesn't hurt the patient. You want to work on that. You want to use that. I don't want you going to um, your local store and buying whatever B12 is on the shelf because I don't think it's a good product. You'll be wasting your money and then you'll prove you'll say, well, see, I tried B12. It didn't work. Well, you didn't use the right one. Yeah. We have yeah. a lot of commercials over here too for B12 shots that you can mix up yourself and then drink it and you'll get more energy and feel more vital. Oh, the, the truth is, that if you stick, if you if you give an injection of anything, uh, you're gonna aggro, you're gonna turn on the adrenaline, right? And if you if you stick it under your skin or your your you know over time, your body may develop antibodies to it, as Anthony says, you know. So you know, think about it. You're irritating every day. You put something in every, in your skin. The body will eventually go. Oh my gosh, it's not good. Like like an allergy shot almost. Will develop an antibody to it. Um, so it, it's just interesting how how it goes deep. I mean. Either Anthony's a genius or he's making it, you know, he's, he's a genius because he's making all it up or it really works and there's information coming from it. You have to decide which one you're, which you think about it, right? 
because right. nobody could, I, mean, I don't think anybody could make this up to work that well. And you not know, and that much. I mean, writing a book, especially the one that he br just brought out, it's huge. And how yeah. should he research all of this stuff within just one year? Yeah. I mean, if you take that book and you, you know, you want to use it for, to build a muscle, you can do curls with it, right? That's good. That's another thing to do. You have the strength to do it. But yeah, that's, I mean, last, the last book, the, um, I mean, the liver, you know, kill your, um, what is that? Liver Rescue. Liver Rescue, yeah. Every, every book gets a little thicker. Let I me mean, start the celery juice, but, but every book's a little thicker, a little thicker, you know, as far as the information. And uh, I mean, he kills himself to put it out there. You know, just like, just staying up all night and writing da 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 and you can't you know contact him because he's probably not even taking a shower for five days or whatever it is and I'm like yeah, I don't I can't I can't believe it um but it's just pretty interesting so again go let me go back to the topic is go going to your professional about incorporating this stuff right you just have to feel you know if he doesn't if he or she says no that's a bunch of stuff you should do apple cider vinegar then you kind of know you kind of know right um then you have to kind of go yourself but you just you come from a place of their ego hey you know, maybe doctor, you want to listen to this stuff because every, there's like whatever, 3 million, whatever. He's a bestseller. There's, he's on all his media. It might be good for you to know if your patients ask you about it, right? And they're like, oh, okay, I'll think about it, right? You probably sit there for a few months before they crack it open. But um, you appeal to the ego. You appeal to their ego because you don't, you don't, you, they, they don't like knowing that you know more than they do, unfortunately. <laughs> they're human, right? Absolutely not. Yeah. Mine hates it. Oh, okay. My, so my know, first doctor hated it. Yeah. You're not supposed to tell him what to do. Yeah, exactly. Have you seen patients like me? I've come to whatever major school. How do you know anything, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you, uh, you can, again, you say, what's in it for you, for them? Well, if you've learned this stuff, then you have options. If you have, or have a tough patient, because I mean, here's the deal. <clears throat> if you are a sick patient and you've seen five doctors and you come to this new doctor and you go, these doctors couldn't figure this out, right? Can you help me? And the doctor's like, no, it must be on your, if I can't figure it out, then it must be in your brain. It's you. You're crazy. Yeah, right? or they send you to the next doctor. They send you next doctor, the specialist. Yeah. And I see that. And it, that's another reason I got into this, because patients would come to see, see me 20 years of being told they had depression or anxiety, right? 20 years. They're on whatever drug they're on. It gave them 20 extra pounds. It made them like feel like, uh, and in reality, guess what it was? It was they were hypoglycemic. The symptoms of hypoglycemia are anxiety, sweating, chest pain, you know, all these dizziness, you know, headaches, uh, fatigue, right? But it's, it's a lot easier to call it anxiety, right? It's a lot easier to call it anxiety. And who's going to tell you get off eggs and dairy and gluten, corn, and soy? It's not easy to get off those foods, especially where I live in Texas, where the number one recreation is to go eat out, you know? Um, so um, you kind of, you kind of um, appeal to their ego and say, look, if you learn this, it may help your patients. It's helped me. And you leave it open, you know, nothing like, oh, you, got, you have to do this, you have to do this, okay? Um, science is way behind. You, know, you, you may or may not be able to really come to terms with this doctor, right? Science is behind, you know, chronic illness. We don't really know why. We just, we have drugs for it. We have treatment for it because back in the day when, uh, fibromyalgia was, you know, on there. A lot of doctors didn't believe it. They like this is patients just crazy, they, you know. But now that we have um, Effexor or Duloxetine or you know these medications, Cymbalta, to treat, you know, this, then they believe it because there's something they can actually do about it. Because doctors feel powerless if they if they can't figure out what to do because it means that they're not a good doctor. They're not smart enough if they don't know how to fix fix it. Nobody, no doctor wants to know that, hear that, right? So um, if don't waste your energy. If, if the doctor's not going to listen to you, I mean, come on, just part ways and be happy about that. Find some other person who will be open to you, right? Because the number one thing, even before I knew this information, was that I believe my patients. I, I didn't think that, well, some of them are crazy, but they're not that crazy. Some of them really have legitimate problems and nobody believes them. And when you give that person that opening, like, yeah, I believe you. I don't think, I think there's something really there. It is a little bit, it's healing a little bit, right? It, it doesn't induce a PTSD where it's like, oh God, here we go again. This doctor who thinks I'm nuts or this doctor who won't listen to me, right? Um, I still get people come in and see me and they're, they're thinking it's parasites and they're thinking it's, you know, it's their uh, hormones. They need to be on hormones, even though they're 20 something years old, still having a cycle. And I can't, I, I can't convince them otherwise, you know? So I say, look, that's not, my job is to support you, right? 
if you want to come on board with what I say, I've only been doing this for over a decade and I've seen thousands of patients, but if you don't believe me, that's okay because I know some other influencer or some other guy on YouTube or whatever, or Facebook, and he's got a best-selling book and he's selling these supplies and he's got a six pack. You want to believe him, that's, that's okay. But when that fails, I'll be here for you, right? I'll be here to laugh at you. No, I'm joking. I'll be here to, <laughs> I'll be here to say, look, you know what? Let's try something different, right? But it really helps them because they get to do what they want to try first. And when it doesn't work, let's say the you know, snake diet or the keto diet doesn't work, then you can say, okay, well, you know what? What about this? What about this? And then they're even more ready to do the medical medium stuff, right? Right. Um, or, you know, your practitioner. So, um, you know, be flexible, your practitioner, right? Even in the conventional world, when I'm treating high blood pressure and I'm treating medications, I don't have... I don't have the intuition that you say Muniza or you, you might have, right? I'm like, oh, this one tests good for you because you, you use this one. This is the dose, exact dose you need to be. I start slow and I go, I go gradually up. And if they have a side effect, I say, you know what? Let's stop that one and do this thing. In the meantime, while you're doing the medication, try some celery juice. I don't care if you do it once a week. Try it. Just try it, right? If you poop all over yourself, that's okay too. Just keep on going, you know? Don't make it hard for a practitioner, especially the intuitive practitioners, right? Because like, uh, I'll give you an example, like people will talk to Muniz and the first time I talk to Muniz, like, well, if she's that good, she'll know. I don't need to tell her anything. But it takes a lot of energy to really like tune into a person and pull the information out. You know, you rather use the energy for her to go, okay, so this is the problem. You told me the problem. These are the remedies I have. And I'll use my intuition, my energy to figure out which one and how much of this and to start you at, rather than having to, okay, you got you know, it takes time. You got high blood pressure. You, you tell the practitioner one thing, but you've got five other things going on. And if he, isn't, he or she doesn't have the full picture, and it's hard for them to bring that all in, you know? So those are some of my tips there. I, I hopefully that's somewhat helpful for you. Um, yeah. And then testing. Okay. So there's so many tests out there, right? And a lot of times, doctors also make money from the test if it's a specialty test, like it's a line test or it's a stool, special stool stuff that insurance doesn't cover you have to pay three hundred or five hundred dollars or euros. I don't know what, what you guys, francs or whatever you guys use over there, but, but yeah. you have to spend a certain money to 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 get the test done. And doctors take a little bit off that too, right? Because it's a specialty test that you have to send off to whatever place. But the question is, why are you testing? Will it change what you do? Will you take this other drug if the test comes back positive, right? Will you do the surgery? Will you go through that? If you're not, then maybe you don't need to do the test because it will cost more money and then you, it make you think of other things and stuff like this. And an example is like the MTHR for gene mutation test, okay? If you're positive, what are you gonna do, right? You, some well, doctors- I'd say will, the doctor will tell me what to do. The doctor tell you to do, right? The <laughs> doctor go, some doctors, they don't know. They're like, okay, I tested it. And you know, here's some, here's more folate, take more folate, right? And it's your genes. You can't change your genes. You're screwed, right? But we know MTH over gene mutation is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. So we would continue our lifestyle of cleaning up our liver, getting that Epstein-Barr out of our liver and cleaning the liver so you can methylate better, right? And maybe somewhere down like two, three, four years down the line, you check it again, you know, and then you're, you're, you're negative. But again, do you, do you, would it change what you do is my question, right? Uh, so you always have to consider what are the res what would you do with the results? How would it change your outcome? And decide if you need to do that testing. Do you need to do a CAT scan? Let's say do you need to do an MRI. You may not have to. Now if you got cancer or something. Yeah, yeah, do that stuff. But but I'm just saying you have to always consider the test the, the results and what you're going to do with the results. Okay. And this is a quote from Anthony from his uh, first book. I think a person may go from doctor to doctor describing her or his symptoms, but stand test after test and hear that nothing was wrong. The blood work, the MRIs, ultrasound, and other imaging and exams don't raise any red flags. We've seen that too, right? Let's say I test for Epstein-Barr virus and they're negative. And they're like, oh, Dr. Fan, you told me I had Epstein-Barr virus. I said, yeah, but there's over 60 you know, mutations. I don't know if I got the right mutation, right? When I do blood, standard blood tests, I mean, they're, they're, they're just, they don't tell you too much. You can have a fatty liver and have normal liver enzyme tests, you know, and Anthony's talked about that. But when I take blood work, for instance, right? I'm taking is blood that's circulating, right? It's like you're driving around on the highway of the big uh, of a big city. You don't know what's happening in on the back road or the feeder road. 
you just see what's on the road on the big road you can't yeah you don't on the see what what happens in the village in right in the organ in the village exactly yeah yeah so you just see this big old thing if you're lucky to find it maybe one day the the goat is crossing the the highway and you'll see the goat right but it doesn't mean there's no goats in in the village right, right. so it, it's just it's just you have to kind of take that into mind and stuff like this um again it's a snapshot in time you know um for like thyroid tests he was saying like yeah i do 30 days in a row you know uh three times a day to get a kind of uh, a good idea of where the thyroid is but who's going to do that it's like the tests help but the practitioner ultimately is a practitioner who knows how to interpret the test interpret the the, the, the symptoms in medical school we're taught that you'll get 80 percent of the time you'll get the history or the diagnosis when you listen to the patient and you examine the patient so it's just something that comes back even so let me talk about now let's talk about the the crisis the current viral crisis now this novel virus right a lot of people test negative but they really have the, the problem they have pneumonia bilateral pneumonia i've had a I had a friend her mom tested three times negative ended up in the icu intensive care unit with pneumonia both sides right and they treated her for that virus but she tested negative so what do you listen to you listen to the patient and see what's happening with the patient rather than the test itself right absolutely um, yeah but so, nowadays doctors don't really take their time to listen to the patient because they only got 20 minutes for that patient and yeah. Yeah. what you got i give you that and you're gone see you later yeah, it makes it easy i mean like you know if you're if you've got 20 patients a day i mean you, you don't have time I mean, I, I'm slow. I, I really am slow, and I'm not the most, you know, lucrative business in the world because I sometimes I I, I work too slow. I want to listen to things and I want to ask things and stuff like this. Yeah, so you got to find out what's behind it. Yeah, it, it takes time. It takes time and stuff. So, um, and so yeah, Anthony has talked about how like it's like if you're the captain of the, the plane, right? The flight plane. The captain doesn't know how to fill the tank up with gas. Right, and the gas guy, the guy who handles the gas, you know, puts gas into the thing. He doesn't have to fly a plane, so doctors don't necessarily know how the test is done, you know. And I, and I had a I had a vision of this version of this when I I spoke to the the, the lab director at the labs, and she was just telling me this, and I was like, there's no way, because I, she said it was my process that I was sending it off wrong. So I said, okay, fine. I've already sent my patients to your facility to do the test, and they both showed that. For example, this person had a low blood sugar, uh, glucose of 50s. And I'm like, if your glucose was 50, you'd be passed out on the fountain. There was no way you could make it to the, to the lab test facility. So it's a matter of the vial sucking in the glucose as it's sitting to be tested, waiting to be tested for a couple hours. But she's like, oh, no, no, just, just get a new centrifuge machine to, to spin down your, I'm like, that's not the issue. Because I, where the guard is, whether I do it or I send it to you guys, the blood sugar is low and there's no way the patient would be a, a conscience with the sugar that low. But anyway, this just, the point is that some of the tests are not always right. Okay. Yeah. And I have talked about this stuff already. Um, you have to wonder who stands to gain from these tests. The doctor going to take a little bit of money off of that or what, you know, um, will it affect your adrenals? If you go, go, go get a test, you say you do a mammogram or something like this. And then you find out you have something where, oh God, do I have cancer? Oh God, you know, and then you have to go all these different tests. You need a biopsy, you need an ultrasound, you need other stuff. That can really get your adrenals really, really stressed out. So you have to, again, decide whether it's worth testing. Now, obviously, if you don't test, you have to understand the uh, limitations of not testing, you know? So again, some people want to do tests so they feel better about the result. Like, oh, I know I don't have pneumonia in my chest with the x-ray. Yeah, okay. but in the end, does the test really show the true result? No, again, again, no. You just have to you have to put them together with somebody you trust to, and yeah. you, yourself you trust to do that. Okay. So, um, thyroid test. I talked about that in the past. You can read about this in his books. I'm just going to go through some of these things. And these are some case studies of where, let's say, um, uh, the nodule went away. Uh, so I just show here this prior ultrasound demonstrated 3.2 centimeter nodule in the left thyroid lobe. However, there are no suspicious nodules on the current study. So this patient following medical medium protocols um, shrunk her 3.2 centimeters, so 3.2 centimeter, you know, whatever, uh, nodule using protocols, right? Um, 
So just, just an example, can the thyroid regenerate? I show an example of this guy who had his thyroid cut out totally, and then they re-examine re it with ultrasound. They saw little bits again. So either one, they didn't cut it all out the first time, which you no, know, the surgeon's gonna cut out what he can see, but this might have regenerated, right? Um, and then liver tests and stuff. So I give examples of how people have normal liver tests and, and even the ultrasound didn't show fatty liver, but when I called the radiologist, he said, yeah, she's got a fatty liver, but we see it every day. So we didn't, we didn't put it into the dictation, into the report. Yeah, that's what I always find ironic because a friend of my mother also got the result that she has a fatty liver and the doctor said, well, don't worry. I also have that. It's no big issue. You <laughs> yeah. can live with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even before- and tell her and then, to do anything about it. No, because- Right. You know, a lot of doctors are kind of jaded now. They're like, well, patients are going to change how they eat. They're 70 years old or 60 years old. They're not going to change. Now she wasn't even that old. Oh, okay. <laughs> she was like 40 or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be reversed. It takes a lot of effort though. Yeah. Um, same way allergy tests, uh, you know, allergies test all, change all the time. And they may tell you that you can't have a certain food or whatever it is. And then you test it three years later, and then all of a sudden you're allergic to this other food that you've never had an issue with. So it's really confusing. Um, genetic tests, the MTHR gene mutation, Taylor Donlos, some of these like genetic tests for breast cancer. I mean, we all know that's so all related to Epstein Barr virus, you know. So um, is there any Epstein Barr virus test? Yes, there is. Uh, is it 100% accurate? No, um, but you can use it if you know how to use it. Um, even the model spot test, because some doctors will go, okay, I'll test your Epstein bar and they do a model spot test. It's not very accurate, you know? Um, and I give you an example of a person with Hashimoto's. If you look at here on the bottom, the thyroid globulin antibody and the thyroid peroxide antibody, these are tests to look for autoimmune thyroid disease, Hashimoto's, right, the most common cause. And so her Epstein bar panel was totally negative. You see that uh, first at the top, Epstein bar uh, acute infectious antibodies. All of those are negative, but the antibodies are positive. So I say you have a variant of the Epstein Barr virus because you've got antibodies to the thyroid, the, uh, the autoimmune, as they call it. And autoimmune, it doesn't mean you know, the body's attacking something, it just means that the body is trying to attack the virus that's in the thyroid. So it comes as a level of experience. And again, it, it can coincides with what Anthony says, right? Uh, you, you go by the symptoms more so. Um, this is an example of um, a lady who I drew blood work on. I asked her to go to the lab and get blood work done. And unknown to me, she had seen a functional doctor. And he ordered a test as well. Um, the er the Epstein-Barr early antigen test, you can see, um, you know, she had hypothyroid and autism. But you can see on the left side uh, that uh, these tests are the same. And her, in the top, you see the little red box there? 12.3 is marked as high, okay? So if you look, seven minutes later, she did the same test. They, they sent for the same test, right? The same arm, the same blood. I mean, the same arm, the same day, the same blood, right? And the uh, Epstein bar now is, this one is negative, less than nine. Wow. So you're seven minutes apart. That's a huge negative. difference. That's crazy, right? Yeah. So you may have Epstein bar and you may never know it. I mean, uh, you're, you never prove it by blood tests, right? Um, there's muscle testing, there's all these different tests. Uh, Again, it's framed by your belief system. You can, you can do a muscle test, go pee, come back and do it again, and it's now different. The results are different. So, you know, if you are like us who have been to alternative practitioners and they're like, well, I, muscle, I, I have intuition, so whatever. I did muscle testing on you. So there's no way you have this. It's all gone. I've seen a lot of patients who say, oh, I went to my scalar or whatever practitioner, and they said I was clear of this. But I, and I do a blood test and I say, well, you still got Hashimoto's, the antibodies at least coming up. So uh, it really depends on your belief system. So I don't, you know, 100% believe one thing. There's all these, all these other tests that I'll talk about, you know, MRI, B12, Lyme test, um, mammograms and sodium levels and different, different little things that can come in and do the uh, effective blood test. But if you know the medical medium perspective and you kind of study it, because I, I guarantee you, every time you pick up a book, even Anthony himself, he doesn't remember what he put in the book. Right? Yeah. So he didn't he go, just oh said God, that in yesterday's live, I think. Exactly. And, and every time I read it, I don't read enough. I'm, I'm like, wow, I, I totally missed that part. You know? Um, 
there's there's so many things and, and you take too much blood out of somebody let's say you take 12 vials out of somebody i i take blood out of people myself because i i only take a few like maybe three vials i used to do four but then after anthony said only do three i said okay i'll do three but i send the people to the lab do the exact same test and they take 12 right i'm like wow I didn't use that many because the phlebotomist, the technician, is going to pull that blood out because the, the book says a minimum. If you look here on, let's say, this little the box here, you see the minimum volume is 0.7. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the specimen asks the volume there above that says 1.5. It's, it's twice that amount. They ask for twice that amount just in case they need to retest it. So when you take blood out of you, you're taking not only red blood cells, you're taking white blood cells out of you. Right? And your white blood cells are your immune system soldiers to fight off the virus. So, so not only do we uh, raise our adrenaline, but also we drive out uh, white blood cells. Yeah, yeah. So you have to kind of take that into account. And I, I make a joke, uh, Dr. Acula is a, is a play on Dracula. Because at the end of the day, they, they throw the blood away. Or somebody drinks it. I don't know. I mean, Dr. Acula drinks it. But um, it's it's uh, it's it's kind of you know it takes a lot you know it drains you <laughs> it takes your it takes your blood out of you. Yeah, so. on one hand they take out too much blood, and on the other hand they're collecting blood for for transplants and yeah. Yeah, I mean especially in the hospital. I mean if you sit late in the hospital for a week, the common practice was to take blood every day just to track the numbers because doctors are are like they're analytical. They like metrics. They like seeing numbers right and and you're like oh why is this patient becoming anemic because you're taking blood every day you know? <laughs> oh you stand for two weeks think about it you know it's double the amount of blood they take out so it's like oh i want to feel worse you know going so it's interesting how that works out and i used to i used to do this trick i used to like uh, i learned it from a uh, experienced kidney doctor he would write pediatric tubes only draw from pediatric tubes only right and these people have a cow because it's like, God, I got to go get these like two smaller tubes and da, da, da. But he was trying to save their blood so that they have, you know, uh, their body wouldn't have to keep on trying to produce more red blood cells and stuff. But um, only let them take the three vials if you can. If you need more than that, tell them to come back some other day and, and get it if you can, right, obviously. Um, the phlebotomist, the people who take the blood have to follow the rules. And they discard the extra blood anyway, okay? So, so the take-home points is, you know, try to use information to make the diagnosis. If you can add the blood test or other tests, great. It just adds more information, but you got to take the person as a whole. Um, you know, the adrenal saliva test is a very common one that people talk about, right? But you can tell, the patient will tell you, I get tired around 2 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm having hair loss. Uh, I don't want to have sex with my husband anymore. Um, I, you know, all these things will point toward adrenals, right? And, you know, I shake if I don't eat, let's say, adrenal, 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 adrenals, right? And right. adrenals are one of the most important, you know, things to take care of. I mean, I think Anthony says, you know, protect your adrenals like gold, not, uh, gold, uh, if gold at Fort Knox is a lot of gold. It's, it's very, if you could take care of your adrenals, you would <clears throat> prevent a lot of other problems, basically. Absolutely. Uh, That's what I totally didn't uh, notice in the beginning. Me too. Because I, yeah. <laughs> When I read the first book, I thought, oh, I don't have problems with my adrenals. <laughs> I don't get tired. Yeah, yeah. You slowly, you slowly learn more things, right? Yeah. Um, the, testing, the, the testing is not exact. So you always, the thing that I tell my patients is like, if you don't take out any way from my, my visit today, other than the fact that I talk way too much. Is that is good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. The thing you take away is that you need to believe that you can heal. Don't let anybody take that away. Now, I don't care how, what a doctor says. If you you know you have to believe you can heal because you don't have that belief, you can't you can't go forward. It's really hard, right? Absolutely. So That's why Anthony's information is also working because people see nowadays, especially in social media, oh this person healed itself with Anthony and in, in Anthony's information. That should yeah. work for me too. And then they believe in it and it's kind of working. Yeah, they'll, they'll I mean, he talks about people who, who, who've, um, who are not that sick and they do it and they feel great, but then they start learning other things and they think, oh, this, this doctor probably knows more. And so it's like a new, it's a new toy. This is what the, that's the psychology of humans, right? We always want the newest, the latest, the greatest, right? If you go, do you go to church and go, 
ah, come on, tell me something new, right? That book's, you know, what a thousand, you know, some people don't, but um, people are always looking for something new, latest and greatest to hack the, the hell. Yeah. Yeah, but Anthony's information really is the newest. Yeah, but it's been, it's been there the longest too. It's, it's the newest yet it's been consistent, you know? I mean, uh, I, think, I think now things are coming to light more given that he can put it on paper, right? Absolutely. But, um, and he can help much more people that way. Yeah. So we're, do, we're doing that. You and I and, and people who are following Anthony, we're, we're helping not in ourselves, but we may mention to one person, right? Yeah. And that one person gets their life back because they did that one thing, right? Let's say you tell 20 people and only one person listens. It was worth it to tell that one person, right? Yeah. <laughs> I tell my colleague all the time. Yeah. So you're also eating according to the medical medium book? Yeah, I, I probably eat too much fat though still, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's hard I to cook, come up. I, I eat cooked and I, I mean, I mean, thank God my wife is on board because otherwise I'd be like, he's eating steamed potatoes all day. But I mean, uh, eating this way is like uh, different graduations. It's like martial arts, right? White belt, you know, up in the red belts and black belt, right? The black belt with the third degree, they're eating raw, they're eating, you know, frequently, <laughs> they're eating low fat or no fat. <clears throat> they're probably eating like Anthony, eating aloe vera. I, I don't know. But, you know, yeah, I'm I not, can't eat that either. Yeah, I'm not there yet. You know, and if you've, if you've built, if you've, you know, it's kind of like people who are like acclimated to it. Like, you ever seen somebody who got a, a, a plate in front of them and before they taste it, they put salt on it? Yeah, my dad so, does that. Yeah, right? <laughs> you're used to it. You're used to putting salt on it. So Absolutely. whenever you take salt away, you're like, oh, it tastes so bland. Your body, your taste buds get used to it and stuff like this. But yeah, even our own family members, people who are close to you, you could be your spouse, it could be your, your family members. There's like, oh, there you go again with doing your crazy kind of things and stuff like this. And they're not on board with you. And it's, it's hard. It makes it that much more difficult. But it can be done. It just takes a bit more, you know, they'll, they'll eventually come around. And, and you, if, if you have a spouse or a loved one who doesn't believe you, that's okay. You just do your thing. And when you start healing and you see, they see the results, they'll start going, hmm, I wonder what she's doing now, right? Not until they get really desperate will they go forward. Because you can't, you can't, you know, lead a horse to water is the saying in America. Right. Yeah. I tell my parents all the time, but they're still a little bit skeptical because I think mostly it's because, well, he tells us to give up this and this and this. What are we supposed to eat then? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's very, it's, it's everybody's story that, that everybody has their family member like thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, they're, eat, they're eating grass and you know, whatever. Yeah, especially for me when I go to work. And my Indian colleague always says, you don't eat that and that and that. And I said, no, <laughs> what are you going to eat? There's plenty of food left for me. Yeah. Again, maybe back in the hundreds of years ago, we could eat things like corn and stuff, things that were not genetically modified or affected by this. But the world has changed. I mean, if, if it's not evident to our viewer, the viewers now, the world has totally changed recently because of something, right? We've been saying for years, Anthony's been saying for years, a virus can interfere with your life, right? Now we Absolutely. have this other virus that's shutting down economies and nations and killing people. So do you believe us now that a virus can shut down your life? Well, there are still people out there that don't believe it and they say, well, it's a virus. We will all get it, we'll survive and then we can go on with our little lives. If they're lucky enough, yeah power to them right but we know that it's not it's not a benign thing and and the people who are following anthony williams protocols they're a bit more protected you know now granted they'll have more problems because they're already autoimmune problem quote unquote autoimmune problems they have viruses burden load so they may be a bit more susceptible but if they're following the lifestyle the foods that we talk about the things that he's already said a long time ago then you're that much more protected Absolutely. I just noticed it the other day when I um, realized that I got a sty in my eyelid mm -hmm. on the inside and it was poking on my eye. And yeah, it took me a while to realize, well, I got to up my zinc because mm. due to the uh, whole virus situation, I'm running out of liquid zinc. So I'm taking the 
capsules and yeah i always postponed it until the afternoon and now i'm taking it in the morning and as soon as i got that fixed and i went away let me say this if you're a hundred percent medical medium doing med medical medium stuff you're eating right you're putting all the supplements in right you can still be vulnerable to or continue to have your problems because what you don't know is that the adrenaline is the most toxic thing, the thing that feeds the virus the most. And it's hard for me to, any practitioner to tell you, hey, stop stressing out. That's easier said than done, right? Yes. Um, but you can produce your own adrenaline, right? Maybe your spouse won't follow your protocols and makes fun of you saying, ah, oh, you're eating whatever. And that stress continues to, cut, to hit you or your family members, right? They keep on saying, why are you eating that way? What, you know, are you... Are you we, we eat a certain way all our lives and now you're just don't want to be part of that anymore. You know, you, you lose your identity a little bit because your friend, you find out who your friends really are and who people will believe you. It is stressful and that stress can feed things. So it's, it's something that everybody who is really committed to medical medium information has gone through, will go through probably. And it's not that you're alone. It's, it's, it happens and you just have to be able to deal with that because you, they forget, the family members forget that they were laying on Mattress Island for years. They never saw the internal struggle of, you know, endometriosis or SIBO or, you know, stomach issues, strep issues and stuff like this. And so they don't remember that. They just know that they want to eat the way they want to eat because it tastes yummy. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the most difficult part. I just want to eat to enjoy my food. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, 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 we're <laughs> We live and die by the mouth. Absolutely. So you, you also got your whole family now joined in on the oh, medical yeah. medium stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they don't understand 100% all of them, you know, and they don't have time. So I, I live and breathe, you know, this information and listen to podcasts. But even then, I don't I have, like, I don't have so much of my time, right? You know, it's hard for me to reread re the books, and do, but I listen and I listen as much as I can. Uh, am I perfect? Of course not. Heck no, right? Um, my adrenals is probably stressed out because of my family members and stuff. <laughs> but, um, but you do the best you can and you know that you're doing, uh, you're helping other people because they have results, right? And you see, I, mean, I, I see the people who are doing it by themselves, they have maybe a case study of themselves. That's it. Maybe a friend, right? But I get to see, you know, dozens of patients a day, you know? And by this time, it's been thousands and thousands of patients that I've seen. And those people who will, who will follow and do, they see benefit, right? And they come to see me like, you know, uh, a year later and they're like, oh, I did, I did work, but I stopped doing it because of Easter or some holiday. And now I've got the same symptoms. And they know every time they get back on, fall off the wagon, that they feel worse. And I'm like, look, I, I'm here to motivate you. Then you know the information. I, I don't need to tell you anything more, make you feel bad about doing the wrong thing. I just need to say you can do it. Get back on a, get back on the horse again, and get back and do the stuff you used to do, so you can feel better. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if they got the family in as well, then it's usually way much easier. Oh yeah, yeah. Start them young. The kids, the need, kids need to start young, right? We see so many. I mean, it's it's not it's not the same as when we were kids. Now kids have much more problems. Yeah, everybody's got a nebula. Yeah, they've got an inhaler for their asthma. Everybody's got allergies and eczema and learning disorders and ADD and autism and stuff like this. It's much more prevalent nowadays than when we were kids. You, your friends will say, oh, when I was a kid, I used to do all this other stuff. I used to drink out of the hose and I used to play this. And I'm like, yeah, look, look at how many people are sick now as far as with diabetes and high cholesterol and heart disease and stuff like this. Our younger generation is not gonna outlive our current generation. Yes, especially if they keep on eating all of the junk food. Well, but thank you for all the work you do in this. I mean, uh, this is this is good stuff. Uh, if one, two people, you know, whatever, how many people we reach and they, they get something out of this because the way you present is different than how I present. I talk too much and, and Muniza presents a different way and everybody has a different flavor that they like. And, and definitely you have a flavor and they may like your flavor better than... <laughs> yeah, I'm not good in talking too much, but I obviously got the right people to do the talking for me <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah. so i'm lucky right. yeah thank you so much for joining in and taking your time yeah thank you thanks for having me grateful to be here it was an honor for me all right 
Well, uh, hopefully I'll see you around too. I'm, I'm horrible at Instagram because I have no, I don't even know how to, you know how to do a DM even. I was like, oh my God, how do I do this? I just follow, I just, I've had Instagram, so I'm listening to Anthony talk. Ah, yep. But I have your email, so. Okay. I'll reach out for you. Stay in touch. And just to let you know, we reached so far almost 800 people with the summit. Oh, good. They yeah. signed, signed up for it. Yeah. And maybe we'll get some more with you and Munisa still coming up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Big draw. I'm aiming for 1,000. We'll get there, maybe. No, yeah. not, maybe not right now, but maybe later on. As, as you make a summit 2.0. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll have a good day and have a good weekend. You too. It's, it's what, Friday or Friday night? Yeah, it's Friday you? night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Enjoy. Be safe. You too. Right. Have a nice day. Spiritual high five. High five. Yeah. Bye. Bye.